Ever since Magnus broke the demon altars, there has been a persistent cold wind blowing from the west. There was almost a constant blizzard in the snow biome, and snow even started falling at the tower. The small flurry soon turned into a raging snowstorm, covering his tower. Magnus huddled up by the furnace to keep warm and think. Something was stirring in the snowy tundra, and Magnus knew he needed to stop it before the world was completely immersed in an unnatural winter. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Magnus the Mage episode. We are doing a mage-only Calamity Death Mode playthrough. I've done a bunch of farming in between episodes, so there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do right away. So let's go down to our crafting station and prepare some of our items. I do really appreciate all the different tips and recommendations. So a lot of these are actually things that have been brought up by viewers. So the first is actually from a while ago. Someone recommended using the Yorazor spell as a vanity for our wings. So we don't have to have these kind of like weird butterfly looking wings because it's kind of a weird look. And I think this is actually pretty sweet. It adds like a magic effect instead of wings. And so we can keep our Magnus look just the way it is and have him use magic to fly. It doesn't change anything because it's just on our vanity slot. So I just brought that in. I put a treasure chest together for a lot of the things that I wanted to craft and a few things that people have mentioned to me. One of the things is that this I thought was only an equipable item, but you can actually use it and it blesses you with third sage, which means when I die, I will have full health when I revive. Over here, we've got a bunch of different stuff that can form um, all sorts of items. But a lot of the unctual ingredients are actually craftable now, like the blindfold is just silk and souls of night. The trifold map is silk, souls of light, souls of night. The buzoir is stingers and murky paste. Adhesive bandage, silk, gel, greater healing potion. Most of those are just simple recipes, which is so nice because getting these is always a little bit of a hassle in most playthroughs. Let's go ahead and combine some of these on our tinkerer table. So we're missing the armor polish, which you can craft from bones and ancient bone dust. And I think we got plenty of that. So here we go, we can do our armor polish. There we go. Yes, now we can craft the Ankh charm. And now we can combine that with our obsidian shield. And we've got the Ankh shield. I've noticed going deep in the cavern layers during death mode is pretty hard to film because it gets very dark. So what I've done is I've crafted unlimited of each of these types of potions using the Louis AFK mod. So that's just 30 of each of these. And then we can do an unlimited gathering potion. Now we have unlimited night owl and unlimited shine, and we do have the ability to toggle Spelunker on and off. The next thing I farmed up and wanted to craft is the grand gelatin. We already had got our mana jelly from pre-hard mode, and then life jelly and vital jelly, those are easy to farm up. One's in the ocean and one's in the cavern layers in hard mode. And so we got all three jellies now, and we can craft the Grand Gelatin, which I'm really excited about. It adds max life, max mana, but the big thing is it's 10% increase to movement speed and 200% increase to jump speed. So this is a really good upgrade to the frog legs that I've been using to increase our jump speed. We have all these items right here, which I think are what we need to craft the Deific Amulet. So let's put all these in our inventory. The only one I had to farm up between episodes was actually the Cross Necklace. Now we need to just craft our Charm of Myths and we can craft Star Veil. And then here it is right here, the Deific Amulet. I'll be using this until we upgrade it after the Devourer of Gods, most likely. It's such a powerful accessory. And with our Grand Gelatin, our jump speed is so much better now. The other thing I wanted to ask about really quick, we've had a bunch of viewers mention the Wing Slot mod. It adds basically another accessory slot that's dedicated to wings. So it will increase our power a little bit, but it's a pretty cool mod and a ton of people have suggested that I use it. If some people think it's too powerful, we may skip it so we don't overpower Magnus during this playthrough. But if it's really not a big deal, I'll probably go ahead and install that because a lot of people have suggested it. So the next thing I wanna do is go to the astral biome so we can farm up a bunch more of that stardust because then we can craft a magic upgrade and our astral biome is really nearby. 
And we've got a lot more power now, so we should be able to farm it up pretty easily. I must say, I am absolutely loving these Shine Potions and Night Owl Potions that I have now. It makes filming these episodes at night so much better because you can see everything. Ooh, here's a good group of mobs right here. Luckily, they drop a lot of Stardust, so we can farm this up pretty quickly. So we need 150, and I think we got 121 right now. So we're getting pretty dang close. Ooh, one more. There we go. Pick that up. And we're good to go. So a lot of people have been recommending that I buy a few more recall potions. And that will allow us to craft an unlimited one. So I'm going to run up here and do that right now. There we go. Unlimited recall potion. So you can set some hotkeys to control how this works and you can actually recall back to where you were, which is really awesome. So I'm going to have to play around with that a little bit later. So the next thing we need to do is buy a few more stars, which the alchemist NPC sells. I'll just buy a couple extra. Oh, we have another pig as well. This is great. So now that we have those stars, we should be able to craft this mana upgrade. Here it is, the Comet Shard. And that will permanently increase mana by 50. Oh, and it turns our mana purple. That's so cool. One of the main things I want to accomplish this episode is fighting Cryogen. Before we do that though, I did want to farm up a couple new items. So we've got a desert over here and I wanna go activate a desert storm. We actually have one of those items in our inventory right here, an arid artifact. So what we're looking for here are the sand elementals. One thing I was noticing is I was not finding any sand elemental spawns and I think it might've been because I had platforms above my whole arena because I was getting tons of slime spawning above me and no sand elementals. So I hope this, yeah, almost immediately I got a sand elemental. I don't know if it was crazy bad luck, but I was here for like 15 minutes and I didn't find a single one until I broke those platforms above the arena. Ooh, it's doing a lot of damage. Okay, we got some forbidden fragments. That's perfect, that's what we're looking for. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting some regen going. This is also pretty good for farming up gold. What I need is a hard mode spell that shoots through the ground. I'm sure there's one that I can get. Ooh, we got another sand elemental. So it seems like these are pretty rare. Here it is. See how our Poseidon spell does on it. That'll probably do a little bit better. There we go. More forbidden fragments. Okay, so we've got it on auto pause, and the things that we're looking for are the Relic of Ruin. I've heard that's really good. And then the Death Valley Duster. And so the Death Valley Duster is an upgrade to Trade Winds, which we've got in our inventory right now. And the Relic of Ruin, we need two. Death Valley Duster, we need one. So we need to kill one more Sand Elemental, and then we are good to go. Ooh, we got one more Sand Elemental. And this should be our last one that we need to kill. got a rare earth elemental in a bottle? I cannot believe it. Yeah, I remember 
trying to farm a rare elemental in a bottle in the end of the archer series it literally took me probably an hour or so and i had a zerg potion i think i collected about 10 elementals in a bottle so this is going to make crafting the heart of the elements so much easier later on i was just messing around with the configuration and i just learned how to teleport and return so you can actually set a button to return to your last teleport position if you're using the unlimited recall potion and that's with the louis afk mod and now we can convert the spell tone into the relic of ruin and we got our bookcase right here there we go whoa this is so cool i have a feeling that's gonna destroy cryogen the next thing we can do is the Death Valley Duster. And that combines our trade wins. Well, there's one more thing we need. I like this recall potion that goes back to where we were because I keep forgetting things. So we need to get sturdy fossils. Oh, here's a big one right here. I don't know how many we need how much they convert, but we'll just grab a bunch since it's pretty easy. Ooh, another good one right here. So we have about 630 of these fossil pieces. And I think we need like 30 something, like 30 or 35 sturdy fossils. Okay, I think that's enough. I wish there was like a quick way to convert all this. But we'll put all that away. Quick stack. Ooh, we got an amber mosquito that summons the little baby dinosaur. That's kind of fun. We just need a bookcase and we'll be able to craft our new Death Valley Duster. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. And it pierces. So I think it's time to put away our Abyssal Tome because the Death Valley Duster is going to be much better than that. In commemoration of the awesome fungus rod called the Hyphy Rod, I wanted to mount it somewhere in our base. I'm not sure exactly where. Trying to find a good spot. Maybe right here. Yeah, right there. We'll go ahead and put that in the little frame. And I think that looks pretty cool. We may mount another weapon right here or something when we find one that's a stellar weapon. I think that killed almost every boss pre-hard mode, so I think it deserves a spot in our base. Whoa. <laughs> I'm just trying out this I'm trying out this death valley duster for the first time and it is so good right now we've got five different weapons and they're all books which kind of goes with the theme of Magnus the mage being a scholarly sort of guy so I like that we've got our serpentine we've got death valley we've got the frigid flash Poseidon and relic of ruin yeah, we're going to be able to destroy Cryogen. In fact, looking at this, we could probably put a platform right across here. And that would be a good place. Maybe flatten this out a little bit more. And we'll have a good arena. There we go. Time to kill some hollowed enemies. Because we really need a blessed apple. Well, we got a unicorn on a stick. Vanity item. That's pretty fun. <laughs> Unicorn on a stick. So I spent a long time farming up a blessed apple to get one of these unicorns. And it is super slow. <laughs> so it doesn't actually let us run on the unicorn. I wonder if I put on frost spark boots if it will change that. I've never seen the unicorn walk so slow. So let's put some frost spark boots on and see if we can run on the unicorn. Nope. <laughs> Man, this mollusk armor is a bit of a bummer. What we may do is throw on our Statagel armor instead. I might just take the hit. I think we might be able to still beat the uh, Cryogen boss with Statagel. 
Or we can, you know, create some mithril armor or something. Oh, it feels so nice to run again. And I think Essence of Elium is all we need to craft some cryo keys. So we need ice, souls of night, light, and Elium. So that's pretty easy. We've got plenty of ice. So let's craft some of that up. I'll just craft five cryo keys because we'll want to farm up the boss anyways later on. For this fight, we're going to try using Statagel. I don't know if that's a good idea, but we've got butterfly wings, the counter scarf, and we'll use Deific Amulet, the Grand Gelatin for speed and jump speed and everything, and the Mana Overloader, and Frostbark Boots, of course. We might also put on our Ankh Shield, but I don't really have too many things that I can switch out. This is when having the Wing Slot mod would come in really handy, like some of you guys have been suggesting, but I think we'll be able to do pretty well here. Here we are in our arena, and I think this is going to be a pretty good spot. Let's get this fight going. Ooh, we need to switch off our rage thing. Okay, let's see how this attack is going to do. We need to get our mana down so we can start using our abilities. Uh, maybe let's try Poseidon. See if this can home in on the boss. I don't know if this is doing that good. Maybe let's try... Hmm. Maybe let's try the Serpent. Oh, so I think the serpent, you have to be hovering over the boss. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's actually doing some pretty good damage. Maybe we'll go back to the Relic of Ruin. We just need to stay close enough. Ooh, we're taking so many hits. We gotta get out of this ice. Here we go. Yeah, if we stay just nearby, we can do some really good damage. And now we're healing. Gotta dodge. Ooh, this is a fun fight. Cryogen looks so different when it's all beaten up. It's like breaking into little ice chunks. I think we're gonna get it first try. There we go. That's awesome. And I think we got our frozen dash from this lore. Placing your inventory to gain a frozen dash at the cost of defense, I believe. And here we go, we got a treasure bag. We got the frost flare, which is pretty sweet. It provides heat and cold protection in death mode. So that's actually a really nice thing to have when we need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that away. And then we have the soul of cryogen. And this counts as wings and it provides heat and cold protection in death mode as well. And it does 7% increase to all damage we got a rogue weapon. We have a snowstorm staff. Whoa. This is so interesting. It's like that um, crystal dagger where you can like choose where it attacks. It just follows your cursor. Well, that's a fun one to have. And then we've got the bitter cold staff. Just a simple projectile. It might do something when it hits enemies. Let's see what this guy sells. I think he sells a magic weapon. So he's got Winter's Fury and the Arctic Bear Paw. So let's go ahead and buy Winter's Fury. And then maybe if we sell some of these other things. Leave me alone. Okay. 
Let's see what else we can sell and hopefully get enough. Oh, we have Souls of Might as well. And now we can buy the Icicle Trident. He actually sells better mana potions than the wizard. So we can upgrade to super mana potions instead of these greater ones. And then we've got en enchanted metal as well, which that's what we need for our wyvern's call. We need five of those. Let's go farm some Daedalus armor, which should be available in the ice biome. So let's first of all put away some of our stuff. And then once when we have some Daedalus armor, we could probably kill Cryogen a few more times. And let's take a quick look at what some of our weapons do. So we've got the Icicle Trident. This is really nice. It's like a Venom Staff. And then we've got this one, very simple. And then we've got this Snowflake attack. Whoa, oh, just got hit by lightning there. Let's see what this Winter's Fury does. This is like that crystal book, but like an improved version of it. I really like this. So many good attacks that we got. And we can go put our lore piece up in our cupboard up here, where we store all of our lore. The more lore we have, the more we can understand about how to get our friends back from the nether realm. There we go, kill that guy. Wow, that was close. This is like, oh my gosh, we have the destroyer. What is happening? Okay, we need the Death Valley Duster. Okay, we need to turn on a map. And I think I'm just gonna try this for now. I don't know if we can defeat him. Oh no, oh no. What is going on? I'm like locked in place. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> okay, let's see about this one. If we can get our magic down, we can start healing. Oh no, it's, it's getting around us. I don't know what's going on. I've never seen that mechanic. This spell might be pretty good. I really honestly don't know what most of these spells do. I haven't tried them out much. I don't know. Maybe this one will be good. Maybe we'll do some frost flare bolts. Whoa, that was close. Get some of these bouncing around. Oh, my poor NPCs are getting murdered. I need to download the... Someone mentioned there's an NPC... Invincible NPC mod. Okay, so I think it's these blue lasers that make you not be able to move. But yeah, someone mentioned that there's a mod that helps protect your NPCs and they don't die when bosses come like this. And I think that would be really helpful. Okay, we're just doing slow progress, but slowly but surely we'll be able to get him. Ooh, maybe Poseidon will be good. Let's shoot some of these off. Ooh, and we got adrenaline. No, we, we missed up our adrenaline right when we got it. Uh-oh. We're, we're messing up fast now. Let's drop a heal. I really want to kill Destroyer. He invaded our base. He attacked our NPCs. We must destroy him. I don't think this is doing anything. Uh-oh. We're gonna get stun locked here. Oh, crud. Okay, we just need to run. How much? It's 10 seconds until we can heal. As long as we don't get stunned. 
We might be able to make it. Okay, maybe back to the Death Valley Duster. I know people have said that's really good against this boss. We gotta get close. I don't know, this didn't seem as good as I thought it would be. Maybe we'll just run around and just, oh, this is good. This is doing some good damage. Oh, that was close. Is like gonna run out of time in the night before we finish this fight. Okay, we're getting really close here. Oh no, we got stunned. Gotta get out of that. Maybe we'll switch back to our Relic of Ruin to finish this off. Man, that lags during this fight. There we go, we got him. <laughs> wow. I cannot believe we defeated him. And we got both the lore pieces. Let's make sure we got everything. That was intense. Fortunately, this mana overloader makes it a lot more simple because we had a lot of self-heal throughout that whole fight. And his abilities are pretty easy to dodge for the most part. This says, placing your inventory to boost your pick speed. However, your max acceleration is decreased due to you feeling heavier. It's kind of an interesting one, but not one that I really want to use. And now we've got the treasure bag, which gives us our hallowed bars, souls of might, and we've got our wagon piece. Ooh, we can upgrade the mana rose to the gleaming magnolia. I want to do that right now. By the way... I don't know if you all noticed, but the Mana Rose has a new sprite. I really enjoyed that weapon. Oh, and we beat... <laughs> we just beat both of those bosses, by the way, with Statagel armor. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, yes, I love this. It's like one of my favorite weapons from pre-hard mode. I don't think I would have been able to beat the Destroyer if I was using the Mollusk armor, to be honest. I don't think my mobility would have allowed me to stay alive. But I think this is a good spot to end the episode for today. We defeated Cryogen, we defeated the Destroyer, which was a big surprise because he just spawned naturally. Now we can get a whole new armor set, the Daedalus armor, which we can farm up next episode right away. And that will prepare us to fight the twins, the mechanical boss, and all sorts of other things. I really want to fight the Brimstone Elemental because I've had a bunch of people mention that she has a really powerful magic weapon. So there's so much to do next episode. If you're enjoying these videos, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll catch the next ones. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.